yo, 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 what's up, YouTube? This is your boy Jay from Keeping It Real, your arbiter of gaming news and commentary, hitting you off with a studio production video where you know this is your channel, where all gamers' voices are heard. With your boy Jay always dropping the word, keeping them other gaming YouTubers like what you heard, and where you always know we always, always keep it all the way real. So what's up everybody, just want to thank you all for checking out my studio production video today and uh, man man man, I got a really hot um, subject to um, dig into today man and I think this one's going to be a one that we're really going to be debating on as gamers and even as developers and hardware manufacturers, this is one of those ones that's a really um, big thing and um it's just going to be about, you know, asking the questions is um, games as a service going to be the wave of the future. Um, and I'm going to dig into that. And um, of course, man, I'm going to yeah, want you guys to go ahead and um, I'm going to link this in the description. Um, a article done by um, Gaming Industry Biz um, where they dig into um, games as a service. They talk about basically games as a service has tripled the um the game industry's uh value um and it just goes and digs into you know a lot of people are not willing to buy um a 60 dollar fixed box man they're looking for games that has a study stream of content and it just digs into it man and um what i wanted to do man is just basically dig into that and talk about you know um just i think the pros and cons to this and also uh what is this about is it going to be the way to the future um and i'm seeing a lot of this man um i just had a comment a guy comment that was basically telling me hey man um you know and i'm paraphrasing um that you know it, it's all about nintendo uh pc and um sony because uh, microsoft they they got games as a service and you know he's basically was just saying you know you know down with microsoft because of that you know forget microsoft and I, I'm I and I'm re, I replied, man, that uh, you do know both Nintendo and Mike Sony um, has games games um, uh, games for service, man. Um, there's they have service games as well. So I don't I'm not sure what you're talking about. I don't know where the misunderstanding is, but you know all the platforms have it. Um, now Nintendo they have the le the least amount of it, um, but they've been dipping their toes in it with um, DLC for Mario Kart and um, e Split Platoon and all their newer games. They're dipping into it um, pretty heavily, and they're seeing that it's paying off for them as well. Um, uh, and what I just want to break down what has to be understood about this man. I I think it's one of those things that. You have to understand that's that's kind of like where the industry is going that's one of those things just like technology you're not going to stop technology to you, regardless of how much you like it or dislike it it's going to still happen it's, uh, it's one of those things you either move with it or you just get out of its way you know what i mean like you 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 could be mad all you want but it's technology is not going to stop it's going to continue um and this is kind of like one of those things man you have to understand that this is what phil was talking about and he got all that criticism and people just didn't get it that he was just simply saying that games as a service games like you know um games like uh, grand theft auto 5 uh you know um you know g g games like unfortunately destiny um you know th these are games like that are gonna continue any game that is gonna be a game that is gonna be profitable in a way of of keeping players playing that same game for long periods of time is going to be a game that is going to be looked at as a model that developers are going to want to sought after because you got to understand games like halo or um forza this is the reason why microsoft is so successful and this is what i was talking about with their exclusives because they're not single player games like sony's games and this is the reason why sony uh, microsoft has so many more uh, bigger um, um, billion dollar franchises because they make games that you can continue to keep playing 
And that's all that's all Phil Spencer was saying. He was just pointing out that this is the wave of the future that we're going to be on games and they're not going to be so much where it's games that we just play. And then and then when we're, we're done with it in a you know, in a week or so and then throw it in the corner, that's not going to be the wave of the future. The wave of the future is going to be where you buy a game and then you continue to keep getting incre incremental upgrades of that game um, and year after year after year. And it's going to last out a lot longer of a time. And it's going to be more of a service-based game that's more or less also has a big multiplayer component. And you're going to continue to want to keep playing that game. So it's it you got to understand that what you know where the industry is going, that's where it's going. And that's what Phil was talking about. Um, that that's where it's going. Yeah, we'll still have the the games where it's just more of a single-player game, but that's going to be more the minority moving forward. And the thing is, whether you like that or you don't like it, it's just it's just where the industry is going. And I think what a conversation has to be is, um, you know, we have to really define how much of that is an issue. Um, because I'm going to dig into what is more or less uh, a thing that's really controversial right now, and that's loot boxes. Especially what's going on with Star Wars Battlefront right now. Um, you know, that's a really big thing. And uh, I'm going to dig into that in just a minute. Um, but it it, it kind of blurs over into that you know and what what i what i personally think is that you know i think a lot of gamers just get triggered and they get a little they start blowing things out of proportion you need to understand that you know especially when if anyone thinks that sony and nintendo is not doing it like all developers are doing it all hardware manufacturers are doing this at this point you know they're all understanding either if the, the 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 third party developer is doing it or second party or it's just coming straight up from the first party um that's just the the norm now dlc is here to stay that's not going anywhere you got to understand that video games right now is is more expensive than to make a blockbuster movie i mean i don't know if you guys know that dig into your facts right now the video game industry is bigger than the the movie entertainment industry so in video games production cost is especially and we're talking about especially you're talking about triple a titles they're bigger than the budgets of movies these days okay so you got to understand it's not getting no cheaper they ain't going to be able to sustain that on a 60 dollar <laughs> you know um cover price and you got to understand look at how fast games go on sale these days they start out sixty dollars, then all before you know it, they're down to forty dollars or whatever, just depending on how well they're selling. But or just depending on whatever sale that's coming up for that year. So you got to understand that you know developers, they're not going to be able to sustain their businesses on on just a small entry fee of just sixty dollars. And you got to understand like their biggest bulk of their sales is going to be in their first couple of months. Um, so. And then, you know, before you know it, especially if it's more single player based, well, people start trading in. That's what you see with a lot of PlayStation games. They get it, have it for a while, and they, before you know it, they're trading it in. You got to imagine how much money that those those um, um, developers are losing when it comes to PlayStation games, how much money they're really losing. Because people buy their games and they simply just, they sell it within whatever set amount of weeks. They're already selling it because it's more of a, just a single player based game those and that's another thing that phil was talking about that's not really a smart business model those guys are losing a lot of money this is the reason why you see a lot of these japanese developers they're they're really warming up to microsoft and you know moving over and trying to put their games on yet another platform and this is the reason why as moving forward you're going to see a lot of japanese developers that typically would be more or less just on um uh be exclusive to sony they're going to be moving over to microsoft and um pc and just trying to put it on whatever platforms they can because they're going to need to maximize their revenue streams and they ain't going to be able to do it just messing around with sony it's not going to work that way so um i see this as one of those things that's going to be a big thing in the future where developers are going to be trying to maximize the revenue streams in any way that they possibly can and part of that's going to be putting their games um on other platforms and another part of that's going to be dlc um and incremental um updates to their game to ensure people continue to keep playing so you have to understand games as a service is just here to stay it's not going anywhere and it's actually a pretty good model because 
on the gamer side when it comes to our benefits as gamers you got to understand i don't know about you guys but i would rather have a game that i can continue keep playing year after year other than just and i get you know incremental um um updates and i get dlc other than just a game that okay it's i play it for a week beat it and i'm done and i'm looking to trade it in like i don't know about you guys but i would i would maybe that would be okay when it's when it's in a minority when you got a game every now and then that's like that but i wouldn't want that as just the norm where that's just how games are that that to me wouldn't be the thing um because it's not like it used to be in the old days in old days games used to last for a long time you think about a game like super metroid or zelda any of the older games those games had a they had a lot of content packed into them they were very deep and um they were very there were games that kept you busy for a long period of time um a lot of these games these days are a lot more streamlined they're not as complex they don't have as much to them you know what i mean you look you you know um you look at a lot of these games single especially single player games these days like your uncharted and you know stuff like that those games you're you're done with them in a week you know what i mean and you're moving on so um or e even games like horizon dawn you know that game what a set of hours you're done and you're moving on um so you gotta understand like games like this are not gonna be really the wave of the future they're really not you know games like your uncharted and your your um your horizon dons and those type of games they're just not going to be the way of the future even now sony's going to wake up to that sooner or later um and even they're going to just you know they're going to do less of those games um or at least uh, make those games to where they they're packed with dlc um so i think the only thing to be concerned about on that is uh you know um uh, making sure that the dlc is all included in a season pass you know, I think that's one of the little tricks that a lot of these developers are trying to sneak in now. They're trying to do it where, oh, well, nope, not everything's on the season pass trying to pull a destiny, basically, where, you know, they're trying to piecemeal you. And that's what that's what I think we ha as gamers have to be really careful of um, to ensure that that type of BS doesn't go down. And when it does, we got to call it out. Um, and I think the other part to that that's separate, but it's still a big controversy is what I spoke about when um, getting into um, loot boxes. Um and there's some stuff going on right now that I, you know, is really concerning to me. And I wanted to break it down for you guys. So if you guys see this, you know, you guys know, you know, look at it from, you know, know what point of view to look at it. And also think about it for yourself and do your own research. Um, is I'm seeing a lot of confusion about um, Shadow War. So now you guys know about Shadow of War. It does have loot boxes. But, you know, I, I, I see even in the media, they're trying to like mix Shadow of War with, with, um, with um star wars battlefront and i'm sorry shadow of war is not star wars battlefront those are two different situations when it comes to uh, loot boxes okay and it kind of pisses me off when people try to act like it's the same thing like um no it's not the same thing first of all freaking shadow of war is not a, a multiplayer game it's not play to win you know what i mean where it's like the only way you can progress is through loot boxes like or some crap like that no it's just simple um armor and gear and stuff like that in a mainly a single player game you know what i'm saying like you know that that's not you we got to understand that you know we got it's a delicate balance between pay to play and just regular you know um aesthetics or just you know um you know um weapon skins and stuff like that it's a very fine line and i think shadow of war is treading that line very very uh carefully you know what i mean um it's because the thing is, is you got to understand there's a not some people got a job you know what i mean not not everybody has time to play video games all goddamn day i i get it for guys who they don't have nothing else better to do than play games all day every day understand it no problem that's your thing but some of us work and some of us can't do that some of us would okay well if we're playing through a game we wouldn't mind paying just a little something to help us out with a loot box now me personally that's not me I don't I don't pay anything for a game other than sixty dollars. Other than it and, and I'd pay for any of my DLC up front. This is the reason why I didn't like Destiny, because Destiny is one of those only games that I ever paid anything beyond whatever the, the season pass is. And and I'm not one of those type of people. I just don't care. I would regular play the game little by little and grind it out little by little. It's not a big deal to me. It's not that serious. 
for me to pay for anything in the game. Um, but some people want that choice or some people do that. And you got to understand for a developer, they want to give people the choice. If they want to do that, give them the option to do that, um, to maybe um, get some get a chance to get some loot boxes that they they would normally wouldn't be able to have the time to do because they don't have the time to grind out the grind a game for 10, 20 hour sessions and stuff like that. They don't have the time for that. So you got to understand, man, um, you, you want to have the options for that. But at the same time, you don't want nothing that's well, now I'm stuck behind a paywall or now, well, I got to you got guys, the stuff, the guys who pay for it, they got more better advanced stuff than you and they kicking your butt. See, that's the stuff you don't want. Um, but Shadow of War doesn't do that. You know what I mean? So don't get that confused with with Star Wars Battlefront that does do that, because you look at Star Wars Battlefront, the loot boxes is how you progress in the game. So if you look into it, you'll see that the loot boxes is broken down in a way where that is literally how you progress. So and you're playing multiplayer with people. It's multiplayer driven. So you think about this. Um, you could be grinding a game for 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours, 40 hours. And a guy that just started the game could just spend $20 Get a bunch of loot boxes and he could be more advanced than you kicking your butt with higher power and better and higher power weapons and abilities. That's crazy. That that that's no, we need to no, we need to stand up against that. Star Wars Battlefront, we need to have we need to uh tell yay, yeah, dude. No, nah, dude. It, it, you you need to fix that crap or you better get that shit fixed or we ain't buying it. Now I, I'm for that. But you gotta understand, you can't be a hammer, man. Because when you're a hammer, everything's a nail, and I think the problem with that is that you you're you, you know with that's what's happening. I'm seeing gamers do they're getting Star Wars Battlefront confused, you know, with um they're getting um uh, Shadow of War confused with Star Wars Battlefront. Don't do that. Like you got to make sure that you don't punish developers for stuff that they're doing right when they're treading it just along the way right how they should. You know, okay, that's fine. But when you go and step in too far, that's when we got to nail you to the wall. You know what I'm saying? And I think I think Star Wars Battlefront is at that point where it's like, no, we need to nail Star Wars Battlefront to the wall. But but Shadow of War, it's understandable. We know what they're trying to do. Um, another developer that I think need to be nailed to the wall that you don't see, somehow they get a pass. And it, that's another thing that pisses me off um, is Bungie. Look at what Bungie's doing. Bungie's doing it both ways. In my opinion, I think Bungie's doing it worse, uh, well, almost worse than Star Wars Battlefront. Maybe not worse totally, but in a way, worse on the back end. And, I, and I'll explain how. Is uh, Star Wars Battlefront, it's just up front in your face. You know what I mean? Like, okay, a person could just buy these loot boxes and then be able to get above. It's play to win, straight up. Okay? It's in your face. Um, Bungie... They do it in your face and behind your back. And I'll tell you how. They got the where you could buy um the engrams, right? And you and it, there's loot in there that you can advance. Well now, you know, that kind of you that's kind of has a cap at level 20. Get that. But you could still get a lot of you could still get a lot of the um you know, you, there's a lot of things that you could still get in there that you is arguably so um not really fair for any gamers even if you're under 20 to really get that jump ahead of other gamers who just started you know um and get a lot more loot and a lot of other stuff that you know other gamers is not will it'll take them forever to be able to get you that's still arguably so so that's at least in the front end right but you think about what they're doing on the back end that's damn near just as bad they're basically giving you a a, a yet again an unfinished game, a half game, a half step of a game, just to piecemeal you out step by step through DLC. They're, they're doing the exact same thing they did with Destiny 1. They're giving you a half ass game just to piecemeal it out step by step. To me, that's just as bad. Like, I don't know about y'all, but to me, going ahead and giving you a game that's already a half step, that right now the end game in it is just garbage. No, no one's playing. A lot of even my friends are like, I don't, we don't have nothing to do in this game no more. Like, and that's we're talking about just weeks later. Now, Iron Banner is up right now. I don't care. I ain't playing it. 
don't care because the gear and the stuff and the, the perks there's no random perks everything is just it's garbage man it's like who wants to just play the same guns over and over again no random perks on nothing it's the, the progression is horrible when you you don't have no need or want to get to level 305 because once you get there it's like what's the point after that and then a lot of the raid weapons are garbage most of them are, are garbage and the perks are so weak even on the exotics that it's just like who cares it doesn't you don't feel powerful because the perks on everything is so weak and so underwhelming that you don't really care you know there's no really big standout guns you know other than that um that newer gun that shoots that valley of uh forget the what whatever coil keep forgetting the name of that gun that's supposed to be the replacement of the galley now that gun's okay and there's a couple other guns that are okay but i mean there's not really most of the guns are just not like in destiny one you know it's like it's underwhelming you know and that's to say the least so if you think about that they're gonna piecemeal this game out little by little try to make it better little by little just like they did in destiny for you to keep paying over and over again by the time you're done each individual is paid like 200 dollars or more when it comes to microtransactions so in my opinion that is bad on the front end and the back end they sneaking around the back and trying to you know what i mean get you from the back is where you don't notice it trying to have you piecemeal a game out little by little as if it's a free-to-play game but it's not like come on you're paying 60 dollars for this game to start a lot of us are paying the hundred dollars to get the the first um get the game and get the dlc as well so you got to understand you know a lot of us are doing you know already have paid a hundred bucks into the into destiny right off the start start gate and then whatever you know uh um microtransactions you're doing and then the dlc after that because you know these two little dlcs that they give you with this little pass they're gonna be some bs the DLCs they're going to give you is stuff that they probably should have just had in the game in the first place. That's why I always keep telling people, when you get that first bet of DLC from Destiny, it's the stuff that pretty much should have just been in the game in the first place. This is stuff that should have just been free that came with the game. They're just trying to throw it at you like, oh, look, we're trying to do something. Here's DLC, the pass to pay for. But basically, it's a way for them to extend the game out to a $100 game. So with Destiny, they're taking a $60 game and they're extended to a $100 game by tricking you by making you think whatever dlc they're going to come out with the two dlcs they're coming out with it's it's going to be small little B bs dlcs you're going to be adding some little weapons and gear and some little little some little events or and it's going to be little stuff that okay this ain't nothing monumental you're going to be basically just copying and pasting from a lot of the stuff that you already have in destiny and that's pretty much it and you know ergo you paying a hundred dollars for a game that should have been sixty dollars you see what i'm saying then after that they're piecemealing you every step of the way that's the stuff that's insidious that's the stuff that is hits gamers below the belt you know what i mean where you're not really noticing what's going on and i i think we should be looking at developers like bungie you know what i mean and in activision by what the stuff that they're doing with this um and of course um ea with um with the star wars battlefront as well but i think the most outrageous that i can look at right now that is out right now is both battlefront 2 and destiny those are two outrageous games so so yeah man um i just wanted to break that down for a lot of guys you know i'm seeing a lot of this in the media right now and you know it's a big thing and I just want guys to understand that you need to understand where to focus your anger and where to focus your your attention. You know, like make sure you're focusing where it's most effective towards actual positive change. You know, what I mean, we don't want to punish a developer for just walk walking the line and not crossing it. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, that line, there's some good things there for gamers and there's some options. But when you cross it, it gets into where it's gouging. And just trying to take advantage now, there's a fine line for that and we got to make sure we understand where that line is in how to stand up and fight for the right things um it being on you know developers being on the right side of things so yeah man that's going to be my video for that i want you guys to go ahead and hit me in the comment box tell me what you think you know what i'm saying um and where are you at uh, make sure you guys like share subscribe um you know if you dig your boys content and man until the next time this is Jay, I'm always keeping it real, and I'm gone.